There's nothing more old mate prefers to do in the IT industry than mucking around with computer hardware. I love it, that's fairly evident. I'm a trained hardware technician. I've been playing around with computer hardware almost my entire life now. So when an opportunity comes up to refurb a PC from a hardware point of view, you don't think I'm gonna look a gift horse in the mouth? I much prefer hardware to software. That's fairly evident. We know that. It's system building time here at the Backyard Tech Channel. This one, I'm refurbing a PC and a laptop for one of my dearest and closest friends. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is system building time again here at the Backyard Tech Channel for a Thursday morning and I am refurbing and building up a PC and if I get time today as well, a laptop. Now, this is for one of my dearest and closest friends who if you join us for our regular nightly live stream conversations here at the Backyard Tech Channel, you'll know him, Lido84. A uh, very, very dear friend of mine. He came to me with a question of, could I build up a PC and refurb one of my spare laptops for him and his kids? You don't think I'm going to look a gift horse in the mouth? I'm going to jump at the opportunity, aren't I? All right, now, before we get into the system build, though, I'm going to justify my reasons why I am doing what I am doing because a lot of my viewers are probably going to have a massive dummy spit with me over this if I don't justify my reasonings as to why I am building this system the way I am. First off, they're not mad keen computer people. They're users, they're not mad keen. Now ordinarily, some of my viewers out there would suggest that for word processing, web surfing and storing photos, they will need something like a Core i5 4000 or 5000 series lap, uh, processor or a Core i7 6 or 7000 series processor, 64 to 128 gig of RAM, an M.2 drive as well as a one terabyte SSD and somewhere between a GTX 950 and a GTX Titan X graphics card. Waste of system resources absolute waste of system resources. Why? Because essentially from the system's point of view at the hardware level, it'll just sit idle all the time. Oh, and obviously water cooling the hell out of the graphics card and the CPU. That's an expensive route to take and that's spare parts that old mate doesn't have lying around. So this, the PC side of this system building day here at the Backyard Tech Channel, what we're, I'm actually going to do is swap out his existing motherboard, which is aging. To give you an idea, it's still got an IDE interface on it. What I'm actually going to put in is that micro ATX board with that single core Intel Pentium CPU. Six gig of RAM. Somewhere between a 320 and a 500 gig hard drive. That's all they need. The computer's mainly going to be used, as I said, for web surfing, word processing, and storing of some photos. So a single core Pentium CPU 64-bit, between four to six gig of RAM and a half terabyte hard drive is more than sufficient for what this PC is going to be used for. Now, from an operating system point of view, as I said uh, to a couple of people, he's happy to have MX Linux. So they're going to get MX18, probably the January snapshot. From a office point of view, I will put WPS office on it for them because I can. All right, that's simple. Firefox, and that's it. 
they don't need a high performance PC to do what this PC is going to be used for. In some cases, the laptop will probably see more action than the PC will. Nevertheless, though, they need a PC for various other reasons. As I said, there's no point going overkill. All right? When I refurb a system for someone or I am building up a system from scratch, one thing I do is find out what it's going to be used for and match the hardware and the hardware resources to the use of the computer. Same is fairly self-evident with servers as well. Whether I'm refurbing a server for a different, different application or I'm organizing a server from the ground up, a brand spanker, all right? So for those of you out there who are, who are gonna say, I'm absolutely nuts, they ought to have you know, a Core i7-7700K with 128 gig of RAM, dual SSDs and an M.2 drive. It's a waste of resources. It's a waste of money getting such a high powered system that's barely gonna be used. Now, from the laptop point of view, I am giving them one of my older laptops that I will refurb up, which will just be purely used essentially for, again, storing of photos, a uh, little bit of web surfing, and taking away with them when they go away. That's it. Again, getting a two and a half thousand dollar laptop organized, waste of money. The way I, I've said this many times before, if you're, if you do what I do and you build up systems from the ground up, you have to, it's a, well, you don't have to, but I've always worked on the notion you match the way you're going to build the system to the end users wants and needs, not what you think they need, what they actually want. A lot of people will say to people, well, you know, you'll find out what they want to use the laptop the laptop or computer for and then you build them an almighty system that they're not even going to use one tenth of the resources let alone the process power or the functionality of the system so as i said we're going to build up this system i'm keeping his existing pc case we're keeping the existing power supply we're keeping the existing optical drive in it as well we're just going to add the motherboard hard drive maybe another stick of ram in there as well and go from there. MX18 will be going on to both the laptop and the PC. And then obviously I will have to head over to the other side of Port Phillip Bay and set it all up for them on their Wi-Fi and all that type of stuff. Nevertheless though, let's get into system building time. Let's get into it. All right, well, just as I'm about to film this, I just blew three light globes in one hit. <laughs> Not necessarily a good thing. All right, so this is the box that we're gonna build the system into. We'll have a look at the motherboard shortly. As you can see here, it's just a generic uh, MC box. It's an older Intel Pentium. We've got an optical drive. Behind here, we've got two USBs and some audio IO. On the back, <laughs> got our power supply we've got two ps2s rs232 db9 parallel port db15 vga four usb i'd assume 2.0 gigabit but possibly megabit nic and some audio on the back as well now the motherboard that is going into this is this asus h81m-e micro atx motherboard oh, i just need to find the uh the panel for it um this is what i'm giving them all right now as i said at the beginning i'm building this around what they're going to use it for rather than giving them an almighty powerful computer where they're not even going to come close to using the resources from the actual motherboard so <clears throat> excuse me we have a single core intel pentium 64-bit cpu it has team group four gig of ram already we might expand that i might have another stick that we can bump it up to we have sata 6 gigabit interface sata 3 gigabit interface so hard drive and optical drive we have pcie by 16 expansion for graphics 
two PCIe by four short cards. Again, it's not going to be used. On the back, we've got PS2. We've got, I'm get, hang on, let me turn the torch off so I'm not blinding you out. Let me pick this up again. So we've got two PS2s, DB15 VGA, DVI, four USB 2.0s, three USB 3.0s, and audio. Now, the last time I fired this board up, it came up, so hopefully it'll come up again. But like I said, this will suffice. We're just going to put MX18 snapshot on it, and that's all they need. This computer is only going to be used for web surfing, word processing, and a bit of other office works and storing of photos, uh, or a certain number of photos. So like I said at the beginning, giving them a high-powered computer, they're not going to use the resources of it. I, I've always done this, and I will continue to do this. When I refurb a box or refurb a server, I do it to what the customer actually wants rather than what I think they need. Um, because that way, you know, if you do it to the, to the way you think they want, you end up charging them more. They get a server that, you know, nearly 80% of the system resources they're not going to use. All right, so I'll get the side off this and we'll have a look at the existing motherboard and then get ready to put that one in. All right, so here's his existing board. It's just a standard ATX board. Uh, two DIMMs, an older Intel Pentium. Uh, we've got PCI by two, PCIe by 16 by one, and a PCIe by four. Sorry for the torch, but there's just not enough light in here. Replace the hard drive. We'll keep the optical drive. As you can see, the power supply is not that bad. 350 what do we got up there 355 watt that's more than enough for the system in itself i probably will update the bios on that motherboard though before we do anything else um what do we got there a couple of sata leads that'll be all right i'll probably bung in a 500 gig hard drive all right well i think the first thing we've got to do is get this board out and then uh, go from there. All right, so I've got the old motherboard out. And uh, that can go over there. I will give him some better SATA leads. These are pretty much junk. All right, so we'll get the box back up. Careful not to scratch the hell out of our table. So, what do we got here? Massive front I.O. stuff. USB stuff. Case fan header. Power and everything, which will be all right. That's good. All right. So, I might have to cut a couple of cable ties in order to get the CPU power onto it. Funnily enough, this actually came out of a full-size box like this as well. So we might end up... Well, they're not going to need a graphics card. So... Because this will have... See here, it's got DVI on it already. So if they buy a DVI screen... I think this has got a 4000 series GPU in it too. Uh, which is plenty good enough as far as I'm concerned. All right. Get all these cables out of the road for a moment. Damn CPU power won't move. Put the fan header just in there for the moment. Okay. That'll be alright. More than enough. Get that out of there for the moment. Almost lines up with some of the screw holes. Enough to mount it to anyway. Okay. It doesn't look too bad in there, does it, actually? All we've got to do is... Uh, so there's the power. So we've got power and squeaker. 
USBs. No USB rear, no USB 3 rear header or front header. But that's not too bad, too, too much of a problem anyway. As I said, this is literally just for word processing and that. The more I think about it, though, I think I will update the BIOS on this and just make sure that uh, it's got the latest version of the BIOS available. Actually, I don't think I will. I will, actually. All right, let me get this set in place and we'll continue. All right, so we have five points of anchor. One, two, three, four, and five. This hole doesn't line up. I could move that if I want. But five points of anchor will, you know, the motherboard's fairly stable. As I said, I've just got to find the rear I.O. panel there. I think I've got it out in the garage somewhere, so that'll be all right. Okay, so what we're going to do first before we connect this up and this up is plug all this up, what we need to do, and then I'll grab the uh, BIOS update for it and bung it onto a USB key. Now... Look, you don't have to do it this way. I do, all right? Mainly because that way I know, even if I'm, you know, putting in a board that's literally only a few years old, you never know whether or not the board's had a BIOS update leading up to when you actually end up putting it into a project or whatever. So I will be doing that. That's USB. Now, the only problem I've got with these damn Azus Micro ATX boards is the damn power header, okay? That power header is a nightmare to read, and especially with old mate's eyesight being so atrocious, it's going to be a bit difficult. All right, let me get the initial plug-up done, and then we'll power it up and just check for any updates. All right, so I just had to reference the... Uh, the um, wiring diagram for this front panel because it is just it's too small i mean reset goes there and i need hang on which way was it all right try that again power switch There's no internal squawker with this, so we don't have to worry about the speaker. Except I'm not going to be able to get these on with my fat fingers. Oh, I hate these damn things sometimes. Hang on, I've got to put the camera down. Oh, so I hate doing that. That's what I don't like about some motherboards. They put the power system so close to everything, it's almost impossible to be able to read it. I mean... You know, you almost need a, a front panel diagram for some motherboards nowadays. All right, so we've got all that plugged up. We'll now get our ATX power supply. Plug that up. All right, so the next thing to do will be to get a screen keyboard and mouse. Just fire the motherboard up by its... Oh, I've got to plug the fan in. Whoops. I'm going to put the fan header on. That was almost an oops, wasn't it? All right, so case fan connected. CPU power as well. That could have got ugly. <laughs> All right, so power's connected to the motherboard. Front panel and front panel I.O. is connected to the motherboard. No hard drive, no optical drive. So what we're going to do now is I'll go get a screen keyboard and mouse and we'll just bring the board up, uh, check the BIOS and uh, go from there. All right, so I'll go wireless mouse, keyboard, box just with motherboard power and CPU power. Grab the screen and if I've done this right, it should fire up. Hmm. 
Um, oh. How about I turn the power supply on? <laughs> there we are. We've got a green light now. So, I want to delete. What's going on here? Oh, there we go. It turned off. <coughs> that power switch is not much chop. That power switch is not much chop at all. There we go. That's got it. All right. Current BIOS setting is not fully supported, the boot device. Okay, so we need to do something about the power supply. Or the power button. We might just need to spray it with something. All right. So we have BIOS version 0809, the time's miles out. Uh, what have we got here? 3.1 gig Intel Pentium. 4 gig of RAM. Okay, so let's get into advanced mode. I'd say we'll have to get a BIOS update for this. Uh, AI Tweaker. That'll be plenty fast enough. GPU boost, doesn't, I'm not sure. We'll go with enabled, we'll give them a better one. Uh, as is, okay. EPU power save mode, we don't need to do it. All right, advanced. Check the SATA configuration, it is in AHCI, which is good. Uh, system A, whoop, system agent. Graphics configuration, multi-monitor. No, they're only using one monitor, so that's fine. Memory configuration is right. Um, platform miss express power management. We don't need any of that. Onboard devices. We don't want a PXE boot. Stay off, yes. Network stack is disabled. Sorry. Okay. Go to boot. All right, now, what is this running in? CPU core ratio. Auto. Okay, that's right. I need to change this into Ufi. So they at least get the latest. Thermal monitors right. Virtualization, they're not gonna need it. Hardware prefetch, uh, CPU power management. Not gonna need any of that. That's good. PCH configuration. Rapid start is, we'll actually enable rapid start. Uh, actually, I don't think we'll bother with rapid start. We'll just leave it like that. Smart Connect technology. No, they're not going to need that. All right. So to configure it. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is change the boot priority. Uh, we need to secure boot. Windows UEFI mode. Key management. Clear all that. Yes. That way we've got a fresh system to start with. All right. So the next thing I want to do, obviously, is go and see if there's a, there is a BIOS update for it. Now, I'll just save that and we'll go and have a look at the... Uh, we'll go and have a look at what BIOS we're actually running. Yes, fine. Advanced boot CSM parameters. 
So if we have a look up here, we're on BIOS 0809. So I'm going to go and see whether or not there is a BIOS update for it. And if so, we'll drop it onto a USB key and update the BIOS. All right. Well, found a BIOS update on here. And it's a massive jump up. We're going from 0809 to 3602. So we will put that in. Let's just go upside down, does it? All right. Advanced mode, tools, easy flash to utility. Yes, I want to read the file. And they are 3602. 26th of March last year. So we'll wait for this to update. I probably should have should have done it off the USB 3 side of the board rather than the USB 2 side. So, all right, once this is done, uh, we'll come back. All right, well, we're still processing here. It's getting towards the end. I mean, it is a massive jump up from 0809. Update successfully. Yes, I do want to reset it. F1, that was always going to happen. And there we go. BIOS version 3602, ready to get up and running. So what I'll do now is uh, organize a bigger hard drive. It's currently got a Western Digital Blue 3, 320 in it. I'm going to see if I can go and grab a 500 from my box of hard drives and we'll bung a half terra in here for him. And then uh, I'll get on and install MX Linux. All right. So BIOS is updated. We'll get out this 320 gig and bung in this Samsung 500 gig. Give him some better leads as well. So if we got screws up the other side. I've got one, so I'm going to have to take the other side off. That's fine. We will move... The optical drive, I think I've got a long enough lead. We'll use this one for the hard drive, all right? And remember the way these have got to be connected, otherwise you slow down. We all know about that. All right, I'll get this drive out and we'll bung that drive in. All right, Western Digital out, Samsung plugged up. So we've got SATA port zero as the hard drive, SATA port three for the optical. Hard drive screwed in. Now, for those that want to know, have I done it properly? You see two screws there, so four mounting points on the hard drive. Like I said, I do things, when I'm doing things for other people, I do it properly. When I'm doing things for myself, it's not so squeezy. I just tend to jam it all in there. Now, I was going to move the optical drive. I've decided against that to avoid having to undo all these leads. So optical drive and hard drive coming off the one SATA power feed, which is perfectly legitimate. There'll probably be people who absolutely have a massive dummy spit for me not moving the optical drive or adding more hard drives. But like I said, for the what this computer is going to be used for, this setup is perfectly fine. All right. So next thing to do is get the sides back on it. Uh, I've obviously got to find the rear I.O. divider. I've still got to find a card reader for it as well. I can do all that, but before I do all that though, I need to make sure I've got the system ready to accept the operating system. So I'll get the sides back on and we'll continue. All right, so what I need to do here is I've got to change the time. Oh no, the time's right. No, no, the time's actually not right. Actually, the time's actually out, but the date's right. Thursday the 17th of January. So the date's right, but the time's wrong. Uh, initially, we're going to set this up with 4 gig of RAM. I'll add more RAM to it later. I just want to make sure that it's actually going to accept the operating system. So I want to go... That's right, that's right. So we've got DVD drive, 
hard drive and then the Eufy verbatim drive. Hard drive priority is correct. Okay, so we'll get out of that. And then I'll go back in and manually boot. So I've enabled hot plug on the starter controller. And I want to boot from, I'm going to F8. Oh, hang on, I haven't got the network connected. Hold on. All right, so I've got network connected. And we're going to go for, this will just make everyone happy. I'm going to use the Eufy BIOS. Because if you don't and you still use legacy, people tend to get aggro with you. Hmm. Not happy, Jan. Okay, what's going on here? That should boot. Uh, okay. Advanced mode. Boot. Oh, I've got to change it to other OS, don't I? Whoops. It's not Windows, it's other. Exit. Save. Yes. Okay. You think? Verbatim. Hmm. We have a bit of a problem here. Hang on a moment. All right. Well, I'm not sure what happened there. I've just redone the image. We'll go with Yuffie to keep everyone happy. See, old mate's using Yuffie. Hmm. Still not booting. Hang on. All right, finally, I've got it. MX-18. December. I'm just using the December one to check that it's actually gonna fire up for me. And then I can arrange the other one at a later date. And with this computer and with the laptop, I've got to add two users to the system as well so hopefully this will fire up i just want to make sure i've got the uefi system running properly on it so that i can um now the drive should be empty which it is all right next yes all right, let me get this installed and uh, we'll check the Eufy settings, make sure it's right. All right, a couple of minutes later, and this thing is going to need more RAM. Four gigs, just not enough. So I'm probably going to add another four or at least two or four gig stick to it. Um, because even though we know MX Linux will run on four gig of RAM, it is a little bit slow. Um, even at 3.1 gigs, so... What I'll probably do is add more RAM. I may even tweak it a little bit, trying to bring it up another 100 meg, at least a 3.2 gig boost, although I don't like doing that. But I just want to test this out, make sure I've got the Eufy system running properly. That way people don't yell and scream at me because I'm using legacy BIOS. I love the fact people always, you know, oh no, you have to use UEFI, old mate. You know, you have to. It's the only way to run an operating system these days. Frankly, that is rubbish. You can run any operating system, even in a legacy mode, but poor old mate, we know I cop it if I don't do things by the book. All right, so hopefully I've got the Eufy settings right, and if I haven't, I can then test it again. Network's not happy. I think I've got a problem with that blue network lead down there. Okay, no, I do not have the UEFI system set up properly. Damn, uh, that's a bugger. All right, hang on. Okay, well, that's a pain. Yumi doesn't support EFI BIOS. So, old mate's just used Rufus instead. 
So if it'll focus, you can see there I'm going into UEFI BIOS for everyone. You have to use U UEFI. If you're not using UEFI, your, your operating system doesn't work properly these days. <laughs> you know, I've said this before, there's absolutely nothing wrong with running legacy BIOS. Nothing at all. But oh no, if you, you, if you do a, a setup like this and you use legacy, you get howled on. All right, so we're going to try EFF, e, U, UFI, I'm sorry, setup. And I am using USB 3, by the way, too. So, look, no optical drive. I'm not using an optical drive. I'm using a USB key. All right, let's try this again. So, drive should be, uh, yes, I have to trash the drive. So delete that one, delete that one, unallocated, apply that, yes, close, fresh drive, use the entire disk, next, yes, whoa, hey, that's not good, run partition tool, hmm, Something went pear-shaped there. Hang on. Okay, that's a bit better. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, yeah, that was my fault. I made that mistake. All right, so we'll go off and format and install this, and then we'll check that we've actually got the EFI partitions correct. It's having a bit of a dummy spit with the network cable, but just for to make sure this is going to work, this is how I'll do it. Now, obviously, I'm not going to show you the final setup of it because... It's going to be customized to the family, and I'm not going to go through all those details, but essentially, because um, I know how they want it all set up um, and customized, and I'm not, you know, we, we know how to customize all this anyway, so I'm just doing this to make sure that uh, I've got the EFI settings correct, and uh, that'll be basically setting up, or basically refurbing essentially this box. I mean, we've... Apart from the optical drive and finding a card reader, uh, whilst I've kept the box, we've got all new hardware in the box. Um, but it is going to need more RAM, unfortunately. I mean, it is slow. I mean, it's taking a fair bit of time to install. Uh, it installed a lot faster on the media PC um, with 8 gig of RAM. So 4 gigs, probably a little bit under spec. Uh, I should have another two or four gig stick lying around that I can drop into this and uh, get it up and running for him. Um, you know, at least that way it'll work. What I just need to do is check that I've got the EFI BIOS settings correct, and then uh, as long as they're done and it and it will reboot into the new system, I'll be ready then to go off and do the customization of it. Um, I'm not going to show you the customization, as I said, because obviously that's private and confidential, but uh, they're happy with MX Linux, so we'll run with MX Linux. Now, I just want to go, yeah, this is slow. This is too slow. It needs more RAM. Um, you know, way too long. Like I said, I mean, the installation process on the media PC with a Core i5 and 8 gig of RAM was a hell of a lot faster than this. So we'll give, say, 6 gig of RAM should improve it. <sighs> okay. So into ESP. Yes. All right, once this is done, we'll come back and make sure it boots. All right, so it's all installed. Not customized yet. I can redo the customization later. But uh, I just want to make sure that I've got the EFI boot happening. Come on. Right, so what I want to do here is I'm just going to rip out the USB on the back. Where have I put it? Where is it? There it is. So it gets that ripped out. Reset the computer. Probably not the best way of doing it, but it'll suffice for now. Zeus. 
Okay. All looks good. Will it load? <laughs> and here it comes. Obviously, as we know, the initial is a bit slow. Yeah, four gig of RAM, not enough. Yeah, a little bit too slow there, isn't it? Um, actually, it's, jeez. Yeah, that's not so good. All right, so I've got to add more RAM to it. I'll go and find a card reader at a later date as well. I've got to find the back plate too, but essentially it is refurbed. It will accept MX Linux. It will run in EFI mode, which is also very good. So we're done, refurb finished. There we are guys, another system build done for a Thursday. Stick around, we'll see what else crops up throughout the day here at the Backyard Tech Channel. Until then, as always, we shall catch you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.